What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, it's that time to talk about music. It's that time of the week again to talk about music. And, you know, sometimes you have some artists like, say, Barry White that had staying power. You know, Aerosmith. You know what I'm saying? U2. Some of them, you know, have been around for decades. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Rolling Stones. They've been around forever. But then you have some that are like shooting stars. You know? They burn very bright, but for only a short period of time. That actually describes probably a majority of successful artists in the music industry. They're gimmicky. They're specifically designed to uh, capitalize off of a temporary uh, quirk in society at that time or, you know, a fad. And I think Criss Cross fits into that description. Now, I'm not saying that they were you know, talentless, they, they they definitely were talented, both of them were talented, but, you know, child groups generally don't transition well out of that stage into being successful artists, you know, as adults. Um, they have to reinvent themselves in, in some type of way or some type of fashion, as we saw with Michael Jackson, for instance, you know, he he had to establish himself as a solo artist and, you know, he had to overcome some uncomfortabilities that he had with his physical state. And, you know, he had to reinvent himself and he had to adapt for the times. But Criss Cross were one of the more successful, you know, child groups that we've seen in hip hop. You know, probably, I can make an argument they were the most successful, if not overall, at least for their peak, you know what I'm saying? Um, in 1992, you know, they were near the top of the hip hop hierarchy, kids. Now, New Edition overall were more successful. You know, the Jackson 5 were far you know, more successful overall, but I'm talking about peak, like very few. Or, 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 or you know, can 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 fuck with them, but you know, in, in hindsight, you know, sometimes some people will make fun of them, but they were the youngest hip hop duo to gain success with gold and platinum albums at only twelve and thirteen years old, and they've been referenced by several artists over the years, including Dr. Dre, Tupac, Method Man, Eminem, and many more. They were discovered by Jermaine Dupri back in 1991 and hit worldwide status in 1992 with their smash hit debut single, Jump, which topped the Billboard Hot 100 for eight weeks and was certified double platinum as a single. They went on to release three studio albums with their debut album, Totally Crossed Out, topping the U.S. Billboard 200, and their following albums, The Bomb and Young, Rich, and Dangerous, making it to the top 20. The duo were also noted for their signature fashion style of wearing their clothes backwards. Now, the friendship of Atlanta natives James Christopher Kelly and Christopher Smith began in the first grade. The duo was discovered at Greenbrier Mall in, in Atlanta in 1991 by then 19-year-old Jermaine Dupri. Along with Dupri, the two signed a deal with Rough House Records and recorded their debut album, Totally Crossed Out, in 1992, entirely produced by Dupree. Totally Crossed Out was released March 31st that year and sold 4 million copies in the U.S. It included the hit single, Jump, which topped the Billboard Hot 100 for eight weeks, becoming the first rap song to have achieved so long a run at the top. No other rap song has led the chart for that length of time. 
The music videos from the albums also experienced major success. The video for Jump, directed by filmmaker Rich Murray, went to number one on MTV and sold over 100,000 copies as a VHS video single. The video for their follow-up single, Warm It Up, also directed by Murray, won a Billboard Video Award for Best New Artist and got to number 14 the same year as Jump. The duo landed a spot on Michael Jackson's 1992 European Dangerous World Tour, as well as a cameo appearance on Jackson's music video for his 1992 single Jam. Additionally, they made appearances in the music videos for Run DMC's Down With The King, TLC's Hat To The Back, and they were featured on the episode of A Different World back in 1992, and as the closing musical act on the May 29th, 1992 episode of A Living Color. Like I was saying before, they owned that year, 1992. A video game starring the pair titled Criss Cross, Make My Video, was released in 1992 on the Sega CD system. Remember that shit? It consisted of the players editing together the group's music videos for a few of their hit songs, using portions of the original music video, stock footage, and general video animation effect. Chris Cross made a cameo appearance in Ted Demi's film, Who's the Man, which starred rapper Ed Lover and radio personality Dr. Dre of Yo! MTV Raps fame. The duo's second album, The Bomb, was certified platinum and spawned the hits All Right, featuring Supercat, I'm Real, and The Bomb, featuring The Brat whom Smith had discovered. Most of their songs had been directed at rivals, The Youngsters, Illegal, and Another Bad Creation. A third album, Young, Rich, and Dangerous, was released in early 1996 and was certified gold. It spawned the two hits, Tonight's Tonight and Live and Die for Hip Hop. Chris Cross went to Woodward Academy in College Park, Georgia. Kelly studied mixed engineering and founded C Connection Records. Smith studied marketing and business management and founded One Life Entertainment Incorporated. Chris Cross' last performance was in their hometown at the Fox Theater for So So Def's 20th anniversary concert in 2013. Unfortunately, fate intervened on the group continuing any uh, shared success. On April 29, 2013, Chris Kelly was found unconscious in his Atlanta home and taken to the hospital. Two days later, on May 1st, he was pronounced dead around 5 p.m. on the south campus of the Atlanta Medical Center. He was only 34 years old. According to the police report documents, Kelly had been brought home to recover from his drug use, as he had done several times in the past. His uncle told police that Kelly had an extensive history of drug abuse. The following day, Dupree tweeted a tweet to fans, excuse me, tweeted a letter to fans, in which he referred to Kelly as a son that I never had, and praised Kelly as an artist. Numerous other artists and fans publicly acknowledged Kelly's death, some citing Chris Cross or Kelly as their inspiration or their reason for entering the music industry. On July 1st, a toxicology report was released stating that Kelly died from a drug overdose. According to the Fulton County Medical Examiner Office, the toxicology screening showed that Kelly had a mixture of drugs in his system, including heroin and cocaine. Kelly is buried at the Westview Cemetery in Atlanta. Chris Smith, the surviving member of, of uh, Chris Cross, not only is he a talented uh, musical artist, but he's also a, an artist as far as painting and artwork. And he made a portrait of his late bandmate, Chris Kelly, known as Mac Daddy. That's something I forgot to mention, too. Uh, the late Chris Kelly, his name, his his moniker was Mac Daddy, and uh, Chris Smith's name was Daddy Mac. 
And uh, but anyway, the surviving member of Criss Cross, Daddy Mac Chris Smith, uh, uh, painted a portrait of Chris Kelly uh, not too long after he passed away. So um, I just wanted to talk about one of the most successful child groups in the history of the music industry. And uh, for a while, in 1992, they were on top of the music world. And um, they still, uh, you know, are, are, are respected to this day. And as you can tell from this video, and if you do any research of your own, you can see that they were very influential to their generation, which included me, you know what I'm saying? Um, they were born in 1978 uh, and 79. I was born in 1980, so at the time, I was a kid myself, 11, 12 years old. So they spoke for my generation, so to speak, and and, and uh, they were very influential in people of my generation entering and, and, and in the entertainment industry or hip hop industry, the music industry. And, uh, you know, began to burge in a passion for R&B and hip hop music. So salute to the pioneers, Criss Cross. What you guys think?